uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, we are going to head into our next session, which will be featuring uh, Data Gumbo. And Data Gumbo will be reviewing the Open Footprint uh, calculation engines, along with options to be made available. Our first presenter will be William Fox, who is currently serves as the chief product officer for Data Gumbo. And prior to Data Gumbo, he was director of operations for Acre Solutions Drilling Technology and was also a commissioned officer in the US Army, where he held command positions in South Korea and Baghdad. He leads product strategy and design for data gumbo enterprise grade blockchain platform. So thank you, William, for your service. Our other presenter is Javier Espinoza. He's the VP of engineering at data gumbo. Javier currently serves as VP of engineering for Data Gumbo, as I just mentioned, but he also has 20 years of experience in the software industry, leading software development teams in different industry verticals, such as telecommunication, energy, and banking. And Javier also currently leads the architecture team supporting GumboNet. So I will turn it over to both of you and uh, thank you for joining us once again. Guys, you're on mute, so there we go. Thank you. All right. Okay, well, uh, this is William speaking here. We apologize for our video camera being off, but we have some kind of bandwidth issue. Um, so Data Gumbo, uh, we were interested in uh, OFP because we were introduced to the team by the folks at the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board in our day-to-day -day business, which in, consists of automating contracts between companies, mostly in the oil and gas industry. Uh, we noticed that we were collecting a lot of the same data that was actually could be fed into, especially the emissions portion of um, uh, various disclosures and reports. And so uh, Johan and uh, um, Bergard were kind enough to let us uh, help out a little bit on team three, which was focused on the calculation engines. So prior uh, to us coming on board, the team had already identified that there were multiple different scenarios by which companies may wish to input data, utilize either customer standard uh, calculations, and then output that data in a standardized way so that it could be shared both across companies and with auditors and so on. And what you see on the screen here are the, the five different scenarios, which are basically a combination of bring your own data, bring your own calculations, bring your own outputs with on one end all the way to a more standardized call out to uh, a rules and calculation engine that is sort of preloaded with different uh, standards and different calculations. Um, and so our, our thought was that maybe we could come up with a couple of options uh, using open source software uh, that could uh, be plumbed into the data model that exists already for OFP to give companies flexibility to handle any of those scenarios with one set of software instead of having to have different groups. So with that, I'm gonna hand over to Javier, who along with Henry Yule did all the actual work uh, and he's gonna walk you through what they've come up with. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. So uh, based on the use cases that I just William mentioned, uh, so we, we, we started doing the analysis and we first we started doing uh, main assumptions and here are the two main. The, the first thing is that all the data regarding the parameter before, before uh, conversion factors and formulas will be stored in the OFP data platform service. So the second, the second assumption was that for the, for the time being, the authentication and authorization is not part of the solution uh, at this moment. So we will try to, we try to focus more in uh, how the calculation engine should work and what would be the main criteria regarding the design? How, what is the criteria that we need to follow? So for that, we identify main attributes, uh, especially what people some call non-functional attributes of the system. So we identify that we are trying to using these attributes as a, as a main criteria to, to for us to define what is the design and architecture of the calculation engine. So here, uh, are the main attributes. We, we, we consider that this, the, any module that is part of the calculation engine has to be decoupled. 
Also, the calculation engine should be able, it should be extensible in a way that we should add more functionality as we go, and then adaptable uh, in terms that we should be able to receive data and be able to convert data uh, in diff from different formats and structures to interact with different systems. Also, we think that a multi-tier or multi-layer approach is the best approach to follow here in a way that we can define different building blocks, different layers, each one with a single responsibility. Okay, so and also as part of this process, we went through across all the community and tried to find uh, different open source libraries that will help us to uh, accelerate and also we don't want to reinvent the wheel. There is a lot of uh, functionality there in the, uh, as an open source. And we were trying to focus in three, two main things, right? One is we, we wanted to find a mathematical calculation engine, right? That receives mathematical expressions and then evaluates the expressions. And we found some recommendations here, like our MathGS is very popular. And then there are other ones. Most of them are in Node.js platform, but there are many in different languages. So in addition to that, we, we went and also looked for when we have a calculation engine, sometimes uh, depending of the different, uh, th there will be a business rule associated with that. So not necessarily you want to calculate the mathematical expression. There will be also cases where you receive data and you need to do the transformation of the data based on conditions. So for that, sometimes we, we decided to possible to add a layer of a business rule engine in a way that you receive the data and based on conditions, based on a decision tree, you can uh, execute a, uh, a specific uh, calculation of formula. So for that, for example, we, we can, there are different uh, engine rules in the market, open source, uh, one is rules engines in Java, and then we have the node rules that is in uh, Node.js. Again, the, all these are part of the process that we were to identify different scenarios and identify different open source libraries that will help us to achieve what we want to do to satisfy the use cases. Now, uh, when we uh, did analysis for all the mathematical uh, calculations engines or libraries, we try to make sure that uh, we satisfy at least uh, uh, the, sim the simple linear uh, operations like uh, you know addition, subtraction, multiplication, but also more advanced. So the, the, the capability to extend and to improve if we need if we need that if the calculation becomes very complex, then. We, we wanted also, we are looking for libraries that can support, let's say, uh, trigonometry, exponential, square root, or maybe a differential calculus, right? So, and that's one, one of the criteria we were looking in, the, in our recommendation for the open source libraries. Now, on top of that, in top of that, uh, we have uh, meetings with the data, uh, data architects uh, regarding how more or less the data will be stored uh, in the OFP platform. And based on that, we identify different parameters, formulas, activities, all these related uh, to the calculation engine. So the calculation engine will run, but all the data will be stored in the OFP data platform. That's the main idea here. Now, uh, here I'm, I'm trying to show after all this analysis and all this kind of exploration, we went to look for different uh, scenarios. So we, 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 we are presenting now kind of the recommendation, the architecture and the design that we see in the execution model of the, uh, the calculation engine. So we identified multiple layers. The first layer is the trigger. The, uh, the trigger layer is how we trigger the, uh, the calculation engine. So right now, we, there are many ways we, we are recommending it could be, we can trigger the calculation engine using just RESTful APIs, maybe using schedulers, timers, right? For a batch processing, or maybe we can, we can also trigger on demand. So an event-driven uh, calculation. So that's the first layer that will help us to decouple uh, the, the first, the entry point of the calculation engine, how you start the calculation engine. The second layer has to do with once you got the input of the data has to do how you read the data that you need, right? How you do the you do the adapter uh, uh, in a way that the data has to be transformed. Uh, you need to prepare the data and all the dependencies in order to fit the uh, mathematical expression uh, calculator. So we have a formula. In this case, for example, you can see the formula. Uh, 
And then we need, we need to put all the parameters in the right place. So the calculation, uh, the, the expression parcel will read it and then evaluate and uh, give us the, the expected result. So, but in, in, in that process, we, want, we will interact with the, if you see in the right side, we will interact with the OFP platform. Uh, we will read the data that we need and we will write always. We want to make sure that we keep always the lineage of the data. We want to make sure what happened with the data. Uh, uh, the data came in this layer, moved to the second layer, moved to the, the, the next layer until the end. So that's more or less what we are trying to, our approach is, is a multi-layer. And at, at the end layer, if you see is the layer that once you do the calculation, we need to uh, write the, the results to, to the platform, to the OFP platform, but we should be open to write to any place too. So that's why that layer is very important uh, to be extensible. If we want to later, if we want to uh, interconnect with other systems, we should be able to do it without affecting the main core functionality of the calculator. So here I'm showing, we are going, I'm going to show you two use cases more or less uh, how this will play out. So we are assuming in this slide, we are assuming that uh, the rest, the trigger is the RESTful API. Someone will send us data. Then we will go in step number two, we will read that data, we will do the right validations. Then in step number three, we will go and fetch the data that is needed, for example, the conversion, the formula, the expressions, the default factors. We will go and read it from the OFP platform. And then based on that, we will prepare the data in order to call the, the, the actual mathematical calculation engine, right? It will be first the parsing of that expression and then the evaluation. Once we complete the, the evaluation, then that that will get fit in the output and writer, uh, the, the output writer and adapter layer. So here, one thing that we are saying is local that all these layers run in the same, in the same node, in the same VM. All this is local, so there is no need to go externally. So the, the core of the calculation is running in the same uh, program. In the other use case, so we we, we are trying to, the green area is we are assuming that the green area is not in the same place where the calculation engine is running. So we are assuming that the green area is in another place, is remote, is, is in a remote server. So what we are doing here is, so that, again, we call the RESTful API, we do the proper validation, we gather the data, but now when we are going to execute and calculate the actual calculation, we will call a remote uh, RESTful API or a remote procedure in a way that we can calculate that and then get the results. And then the result will go to the next uh, layer, to the writer layer and the adapter layer. And then with that, we will collect the results. So as, as what we are trying to show here is by doing this kind of approach, a multi-layer or multi-tier approach, uh, we are able to uh, define different building blocks, uh, be, uh, define specific responsibilities, right? And based on that, uh, we were able to, to adapt and satisfy all the main uh, use cases. So here are some examples uh, uh, how to use the, uh, the rule, rules engines. Uh, here, for example, an, uh, it's an example of condition, right? So if we want to know, for example, if, if, you, if you were born in this day or before or after, then you will get uh, the, the fee will be different. So you will get a different fee or different tax. Uh, all these can be modeled in a rules engine. The same thing in a, uh, here is another, another example how you use the rule engine in the, in the calculation process. Uh, in this case, it's a decision tree. You get the data, but there are conditions. In this case, for example, if the, in, the transaction amount is greater than this, then you do this. If it's no, you check again, you, you check, you check another condition and then based on that condition, you will decide what to do. So that flexibility, uh, a rules engine will, uh, will provide to the calculation uh, in, in overall. So also on, uh, in addition to all this, we try to identify what are the, the well, at least what we, we know in terms of what are the, the formulas and the calculations that we will deal with at least initially. So initially, as you see here, it's an example of uh, we are trying to calculate the CO2 emissions, right, for a stationary combustion uh, calculation. And as you see, is uh, the 
The formula in this case is very simple. It's a, you will provide either the weight or the consumption, right? And then you will multiply by the conversion factor. So we need to identify the conversion factor, but the conversion factor depends, in a, uh, from, uh, depends on another variable. So that's one use case that uh, when we go to the live demo, I will address, right? We will, we will see how all this uh, uh, is tied together. Uh, but this is an example, a classic example that uh, you will see across uh, multiple calculations. Is you get received data, and then you receive the input data, and then you need to find the corresponding uh, conversion factors and apply the formula. Uh, another example that we were looking, trying to find uh, what is the complexity of the formula is, for example, when we talk about the uh, the air uh, emissions, right? The airplanes or flight emissions. And we found, for example, in this case, the formula includes uh, exponential. So you have a, you do the summation, and as you see, is a factor A plus, plus B times C uh, uh, to the number of miles minus one. So it's a little more complicated. And we wanted to make sure that whatever solution that we have, right, uh, is able to resolve this kind of equation, okay? So, so now, now I'm going to switch to the uh, live presentation. Uh, we prepared something at least to show all this. What we already discussed, we, are, uh, we, we created some kind of uh, POC in order to show at least the conceptually how we think this will look and also the challenges regarding that. So here uh, we prepare a, a small prototype. This is not uh, for any... Uh, this is not the, the actual uh, UI, uh, but this is for us to, uh, uh, to provide an idea how we think this will look, uh, the, the calculator, the calculator in, the calculation engine should look like. So we are, we are thinking that here, for example, you will see, right, the, a different set of calculator, calculators. We imagine that the community will come, right, and create different calculators. There will be a standard calculators, right, that people will, uh, subject matter experts, they know they, they should be able to create different calculators, but also people who, who want experience, right? So they can create their own custom calculators. Okay, so this is more or less how we think uh, we model in order to try to model uh, the, kind, the kind of multi layer approach. So here is the way how we model, right? So the calculator normally we have a mathematical expression, in this case for stationary combustion, right? So we have two mathematical expressions. This calculator will return two results. One is the CO2 emissions and the N2O emissions. Now, if you see this, this emission, we have this formula. It will multiply the weight times the heat content times the uh, CO2 factor, that is a conversion factor. And here is the unit that will uh, the calculation return. So the same thing for the uh, uh, NT, N2O emissions. So, but in this case, we will use a different, it's the same, we will enter the weight, the heat content, um, a different uh, factor here. So, and the unit that uh, this calculator will return. So here we are specifying what is the main mathematical expression and what are, that we want this calculator to, to execute. The second layer is the variables, all the mapping, the parameters. What are the parameters that this calculator uh, we need, right? So in this case, uh, all the parameters are, for example, in the, case, the weight, right? So the when the weight, each variable, each parameter could, could be right now from these three different types. It could be input. Input means that it's coming from the payload, from the RESTful API. A lookup means that we need to do a, a conversion before we calculate. We need to go and look up in a, maybe a, a, a conversion factors a lookup table. And then the rules rules means that we need to execute a rule. A rule like maybe there is a condition if this if the value comes with this is greater than this, then execute that. So right now, for the purpose of this demo, we implemented just the input and lookup. So in this case, we said the weight. It's a variable that will be input by the user. The user needs to enter that. And then the units will be uh, tons, uh, short tons. And then the other variable is the heat content. Uh, for heat content or CO2 factors, uh, N2O factors, we are assuming that this will come from a lookup uh, operation. 
So we will go to a conversion factor convection, conversion uh, factors table, and we will look that value based on these keys, the category fuel type, category fuel type, and then we will return based on in these units, the values. And so based on that also, we since we need category and fuel type, category and fuel type will be variables too, where we, what we are expecting the user to enter, uh, to provide those values. Now here below, here we have, at least this is a, a simple example of conversion factors for uh, stationary combustion. So here you are able to upload, to put the conversion factors uh, and, and the mapping. So what the calculation engine will do is based on this definition, whatever category fuel type the user provides in the UI, uh, it will map, in the, it will do a, a simple lookup and then find the corresponding uh, uh, conversion factor. As you know, we are following the, the headers in order to match, we are following the headers to match the, the values of the, for example, in this case, heat content, right? So the, the name of the variable uh, match with the heat content of the uh, conversion factor table. So once, once we do that and we set up this calculator, uh, and we think that it's okay, we have the option to, to test. So we can click here and test and see uh, all the input variables that we define in the calculator will be, you, you will be able to enter and select that. So in this case, for example, we, said we, we decided the category fuel type will be a user uh, input data, input variables. So that means the user needs to provide that. And then the, the same thing with weight. So here in the categories, uh, we have only one option right now. We select the stationary combustion and then we select the different types of fuel, right? So, and then I enter the, the weight based on the, in, in these units. And I click calculation and then I, I add the CO2 emissions or, and the N2O emissions. And, and Javier, to your point earlier in the slides, because this is all supported by REST APIs, you don't have to do this manually for everything, right? It's exactly. just, you're showing what the is, is going on, but the intent would be for large companies would be just feeding into this and uh, by API and getting results. Back. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. This is this this is the environment where you you play around. It's the playground. You define your calculators and then you publish the calculator. So anyone can call uh, from different places, right? So, but the idea is that we believe that having this playground or workspace or uh, for the community, right, will allow us to first to foster the sharing the knowledge, right? So people with knowledge, with expertise can create their own calculators, put it as a standard. People will go there, learn, and not only that, uh, learn the best practices, but also accommodate based on the circumstances, right? Because uh, this kind of scenario depends on regulation in different, in different countries, in different places. So, but by doing this, you have a place where you can go, uh, test, do experiments, and then once you feel it's okay, you, we, are, we envision that you should be able to publish to the world. Everyone should be able to see my calculator and use it, using just the RESTful API. As you see, all this is dynamic and configurable, right? So it shouldn't be, we don't want this to be super tight. It has to be configurable. The user should be, uh, you should come here, and of course, uh, based on the right documentation, try to do the right calculation. Okay. Yeah. So that, that would be my. All right. So that's the, that's the end of the, uh, the demo. Do you want to um, stop sharing and make this demo? If anybody has any questions, I think we have a few minutes left in our time slot. So here is more, more or less the, in general, the, it's kind of the planning, right? So right. regarding uh, how we want to approach this and the resources, uh, because we, we, we are creating kind of baseline. Right. What is what we would like to do? This demo, the prototype, is to give that kind of uh, approach so people visualize and see what where we are, what is the direction, and then. But in order to have a full uh, production ready, or uh, we need to uh, allocate resources, right, and also define the technology and the, uh, and continue working on this. So for that, we we estimate. This is a, a, a estimate in general. Uh, uh, what we would like to do, right? Uh, more or less, the, uh, a time a time frame. How long it will take?
And Javier, uh, so we got a question from Bill Yacht. What data is used to test the calculations? Do you imagine a community governance process to standardize or certify calculators? So uh, I think that's to be determined. I suspect, you know, if, if you know, uh, EY comes on here and says, I'm going to certify 15 of these calculators, that's probably better than if William Fox says, I'm going to certify exactly. 15 of these calculators. And uh, there's definitely ways we can add metadata and fields and a workflow for that over time. Exactly. Um, and in terms of data, I mean, we're just using, you know, data dumped to Excel. But presumably companies will be able to pull, you know, expenditure data from their SAP or, or whatever exactly. as inputs for this and see what their own data looks like in the system. Yes. Yes. So one other point also, guys, um the resource you're talking about, we are recruiting those resources as we speak. So I hope that in the next couple of weeks we have those resources together so we can start doing the work which we're proposing to do. Okay. Absolutely, great. Yeah. And if I can just, I was going to say, if I can just add one more point to the the question around the the sort of the certifications, and and in many cases, especially in the world of carbon, I mean, there are governance processes, ISO standards, et cetera, um, that are used and or regulatory so, so that sort of define these. And so, provided you, you've got a whole ecosystem of third party auditors and verifiers that will that that organizations use to assure the numbers that they that they publicly report no different than they do with financial data. It's a similar kind of concept. Um, so I, I would imagine that 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 governance process also starts to align around that that sort of a third party assurance, whether it's certification or reasonable assurance as well. So something to consider. Good. Other questions from the group? William Javier, maybe one one point I was I was thinking about this and it relates to a point that I answered back, but I wanted to get your sense as well or get your feedback. I mean, obviously we're talking about calculations and estimates and so on and so forth. And as organizations and as technology evolves, we're moving into more of a monitoring and measuring culture. Um, I mean, what's your view around potentially some of the complexity of the calculations that are required in light? of better technology to measure and monitor emissions directly. Yeah. Well, I think what we're we're seeing today is that um, you know, companies are voluntarily or under pressure because they need to raise money and it's tied to that putting out better uh, you know, putting a honeywell camera out there to get a real time view of their methane off the, you know, the pipe, that sort of thing. And uh, you know, they're also requiring more data from their vendors, like the truckers, for instance. Uh, you know, typically you'll see something where, my, you know, mileage and de demerge are part of the contract. Well, okay, if you're going to pay off that, we're going to collect it for commercial reasons. And so, uh, to your point earlier about more IoT data of all types, uh, I think there'll be a two-stage thing where you do sort of commercial calculations that you need to do to pay vendors or, or bill customers. And then after that data has sort of been validated from a commercial standpoint, a second stage where via API you, you feed it into an engine like this and say, okay, we've determined that our fleet did, you know, 187,523 miles for customers A, and as part of our reporting to them, this is scope three upstream to them, run it through the engine and hand it off to them. I think, yeah, there, there's two stages, maybe moving to three stages using these types of calculations. Yes, and also from the te technical side, I see that we, we need to move fully cloud computing. So in the sense that we should all, we, this kind of uh, calculation engine should live in any place and should run in any place, should be very available, especially access to the resource right now is very easy right now. We can use commodity servers. There is no need to have a very monolithic application. It could, it could be totally distributed. It could run in different places. And then that kind of, I think we are in that stage, we, we can make it all this available for everyone. Right, so to be to use, and, and I don't think in terms of cost we are talking about a, a, a super like in the past, right? This was if you try to do this kind of enterprise, it will take a lot of time and a lot of resources. So that's my point. Move it to the cloud computing, and then try to use all these virtualizations, uh, new technology, right? Like uh, we can discuss a container base or any other kind of virtualization technologies. Right. Well, Good. I was going to say, I think uh, any other questions? I think that's uh, the last of the questions. So, so, so thanks, uh, William and, and Javier for that, uh, that presentation. Heidi, if I can perhaps turn it back over to you. 
Thank you, Sammy, and thank you, William and Javier. That was uh, very interesting. I know it's a complicated topic uh, to uh, to describe the calculations and so forth. So really appreciate the effort and uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you.